hello hello making a video paint video and I want to talk a little bit about Friedrich Nietzsche a great philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche my second favorite one right after Gautama Buddha Gautama is the number one philosopher because he is the infinite the eight on the side okay. and Friedrich used to be his wife Yazoda yes that was a long time ago 3,000 maybe 5,000 years ago you know we don't know for sure because there is no complete detailed recorded data on the actual years that they have lived so it could have been 5,000 years back and there are people speculating and working on these things you know there are people who really want to find out the, the time and it really doesn't matter so much you know, somewhere a couple thousand years ago and it doesn't matter so much you know what matters doesn't even matter whether or if we reincarnate or what happens what matters is that we speak the truth okay and what is the truth what is that actually you know people have very different ideas about what the truth is it's my papa dog yes he is my papa dog yes my papa dog is the best of all he's the best of god and he took a shower <laughs> so I've been listening to Gary, Gary and Mentum, and Greg Sadler. I like listening to these two people. They have a lot to say. Yeah, it's very, very nice listening to them. They have nice, pleasant voices. They don't stutter. And they, they contribute a lot to philosophy which is great. And Gary is the reincarnation of Arthur Schopenhauer. Okay, so that is, that's awesome. So, and Greg Sadler is a philosophy professor and it's very pleasant the way he does the, the educational process. Very pleasant and and very polite and very respectful to people when they ask questions and some people ask some very strange questions sometimes because they mix things up so much but you know it's, I like the way he interacts with them and I like also very much that he gives people space you know, to explore for themselves and uh, he's not that quick to give people a, a finished conclusion on or he doesn't push his personal conclusions into the forefront he gives people that that playground the, the, he gives people that that freedom, you know, to explore and ask the questions themselves and and probe deeper into it. You know, we can't probe very deep if a professor comes with his preconceived conclusions, which I have experienced quite a lot with professors in the schools that I went to. So I had a, uh, I had a, a lot of very unpleasant professors. I, I didn't luck out with them. I didn't like luck out with most of them. I had maybe a handful of good ones. They were very good. So I'll never forget my my favorite professor, Professor Dr. Monika Pritze. And if she ever sees this video, I love you. You know, she's amazing. 
That was way back in Germany. So anyway, so I am back in the U.S. I left for a while. I left several times and went back to Germany. And also because the tuition is just way too high. In the U.S. and Germany, it's socialized. I don't know for how long though. Uh, so we don't know how long that's going to be going. But you know, ended up becoming an autodidact. <laughs> an autoduct tape. Autoduck. And then uh, an autark duck. That's what I became. So and um, that's nice too. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That is I'm an artist. I am a free spirit. Uh, didn't make it in psychology because for several different reasons. Yeah. Dr. Pritze told us about the practica that you have to do, go through pretty much globally when you get into neuroscience. Uh, also, when you come from the field of psychology and you go more into clinical psychology, then you enter into the practica and the, the work with laboratory animals and, and rhesus monkeys and, and other animals and something inside of me shut down when I heard that. So for me it was clear, that's not going to be me, you know, I won't be able to do it. And if I tried, I would rescue all the animals. I would free all of them. It doesn't matter what they're working on. You know. It doesn't matter how close they are to some conclusions. And most of people, most most people who do this aren't. They don't even have a clue why they're doing it. You know, I speculate that a lot of those people are pretty cast and and shut down on the inside. You know, when it comes to their amygdala and their and their mirror neurons, that's what people call heart, you know, the mental heart. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with, I'm gonna work with that gray. I have two different grays, no, I don't know which one it is. I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay, this one's more blue. Okay. I'm going through a grieving process right now over my friend Barbara that was a very unexpected leaving that happened there that none of us has expected none of us has you know we didn't even want to we didn't even want to get into that we didn't even want to acknowledge it none of us we when she told me that she was sick and then she said uh, some autoimmune and some I didn't even want to acknowledge it and she didn't want to really acknowledge it either she played it way down about half a year ago and then suddenly it it took on a, a worse turn and it it accumulated and And it got much worse, and she ended up in the hospital and doing chemotherapy, and the chemotherapy killed her. You know, you know how many people are killed by pharmaceutical intervention. I just want to want people to think about this. But that's approved. That's approved by the FDA. That's approved by those those consumer protection agencies worldwide. And the reason why is because they're making money on it and they have a lot of leverage. That's why it's approved. 
kind of makes me very angry. Okay, this is what I said from the field of reality. From another plane, there's a com that's a completely different perspective. I'm not going to get into it right now. Birgit, um, I mean, Barbara was an angel soul. Birgit was an angel soul. Too. Birgit uh, w went through a very similar thing, but but it took much longer for Birgit. It was much more suffering. So, so at least Barbara didn't have to suffer for a long time. She didn't have to be living with with pain medicine and stuff like this for a prolonged time. So that's that's much better than, than the way Birgit had to suffer for years. And they didn't help her. The, the stuff didn't help her. The best that came out of it was the pain management. So they didn't help her. And it's funny how every time I talk about this, I get some stone, but that makes me want to talk about it even more because I see the tremendous resistance in people. Tremendous resistance, and it, it feels uh, it, it feels really strange that my humble, unseen videos, when I talk about the medical industry, when I when I highlight what's going on, when I criticize that publicly, then suddenly there are some people that are taking offense. Obviously, some people who have, who are making money, you know, in that field and who don't want to acknowledge that this is unethical what they're doing, what they're supporting. It's funny how suddenly there are those people there that will give me a thumbs down because the free spirit friends that I have they would never give me a thumbs down on a video like this they they will have already acknowledged these things on their own they have come to very similar conclusions Ten people watched that video, already two some stone. Where are these medical type of people coming from suddenly? I don't know, it's just a question. I wonder if they have some some sort of like a... They have their own secret spy bot system, you know, where they have AIs that spot out every single video that talks critically against the medical industry. And then they have their people working for them. I know that there is stuff like this going on because I've already seen it. It has already come out to the surface, these kind of things. This, this kind of col corporate collaboration and the people they hire for that and so on. They, they, some corporations hire trolls, paid trolls, paid trolls to, to sabotage someone who makes tries to educate the public you know so. But stuff is going on, so that's why I'm speculating what it is, what's happening now. There, spy bot apps that you can't get as a regular person, or or, or that I can't get, but that are that are there for hire and for money for the corporate agenda type of people. Here, hire my mafia 
Middleman spy bot app. <laughs> Sold to you by Bill Gates. Oh, I don't know. I'm just speculating. And it wouldn't surprise me if it, if it was sold by Bill Gates because he has already created some pretty terrible things like uh, like spyware talked which took away an entire book that I wrote. Because I wasn't willing to give Spyware Doctor money to to unfreeze my Microsoft computer. Now I have a Chromebook. Yes! This isn't going to happen anymore. It's not going to happen anymore. So my books are not going to be destroyed anymore. And I thank Google for that. People or mad at Google, they should be really mad at Bill, G Bill Gates instead. <sighs> and I'm, I'm sure there are infiltrators into Google so that People can later say, see Google, terrible people, but maybe they're just infiltrators because Google itself has very ethical standards, a very ethical platform to stand on. So you can argue with me. I'm open for argumentation. I'm open to learn. You know, if you have some information to give me that is not coming from the corporate right, from some, that's not some kind of Christian conspiracy, then yeah, I'm willing to check it out. But yeah, so far, I like Google the best. You know, every time a, a corporation becomes very large, certainly it could contain some CEOs that are quite profit driven, yeah. But the overall ethics of this company is very high standard. So that's why I support it. They're very very good on all levels. Environmental, animal, uh, earth Recycling, peace, yeah. they talk to Buddhists, they have Buddhists speak, they had Eckhart speak there. So, they give people freedom of creativity, you know, it's all good. If there are infiltrators in there, yeah, that. The chance of that happening is very high in general. But I want to talk about Friedrich Nietzsche. And there are a lot of misunderstandings around this person, of course. Not just through Sister Elizabeth, but Elizabeth. But not only through this entire mix-up of what she took out of context and passages that she took out and, and, and inserted at different places to make it look like it means something that it, it was not intended by Friedrich. But Friedrich's own work is so is so convoluted and so complex and so witty and so with so many parables and so much quick 
comparisons and so many statements that that just come into his brain and he would write down that yeah that that alone you know his philosophical expressions alone are giving rise to society not understanding it very well and um, it gives room for a lot of interpretation and it actually his work actually expects the reader to already have some ground knowledge on all of this he forgets he forgot while he was writing that the reader is probably not going to be that informed about the things that he already puts out there as, as pre prerequisite knowledge. So, and then back then and even more now so people are even more misunderstanding him and everyone understands him a little bit differently and then there's just a whole lot of projection going on <laughs> from one person into this philosopher and I don't blame people when they do it because they're trying to piece things together. They're trying to make sense of what he has written. And particularly the late works that he wrote in the years before his death. Starting, I would say, starting with the Zarathustra. So, and then from then on. So, ending with his van briefen with the with the letters to his friend where his psychological and neurological state shows the the illness that he was suffering from because that he had he was suffering from syphilis which has caused a neurological change in his brain but I find it very interesting and intriguing to say the least how this neurological illness coincided and was very synchrone with his own thought processes and his own metamorphosis not just in terms of getting older or getting that that illness but it, it ju it's just a, like a like a natural extrapolation of that was what was going on before the illness you know the thought processes that that preceded any of these events that where he was still young and and hiking through the mountains in Switzerland, it just seems like a very playful, natural flow into this one direction, into the direction of dismemberment of his own persona. It's a, a literal and metaphorical synchronicity of dismemberment of self, the dissolution of self. I think Friedrich Nietzsche has demonstrated that to us more than any other philosopher in history, even more so than the Buddha did, than Jiddu. Jiddu has gone to something similar to that as well. But even in 
in the most rain foggy old old age brain fogged moments and even short before his death Jiddu would always come back to consciousness suddenly and suddenly be there fully present for someone and be in total clarity and meditation so that's that's a there's something else going on it's Jiddu something that is not human not mortal okay and um, so for Friedrich the Friedrich the, the mortal you know just like Jesus the mortal the mortal human not a god not god level yet not, not for a long time so if you have an objection to what I'm saying you're welcome to write it don't don't be shy you know. So just don't insult me. That's all I'm asking. Because if you insult me or if you say you're full of shit, you just don't know what you're talking about, then that kind of shuts down the conversation. So I had a lady earlier on Facebook who I guess she wanted to try to talk to me, but she just couldn't because the ego just couldn't talk straight towards me to me the ego just couldn't because then the ego would have to admit something and it just couldn't do it so it had to come out as a as what my dad always called the, the hip shoo shooting you know like my, my mother always shooting people with her hips with her nice female hips <laughs> the hip shots you know the the egoic side shots, you know, the the little side snapping, which is intellectually dishonest. It's not straightforward, and that's what I saw earlier on Facebook with this one lady. And then I said, "Are you taking offense to my original post?" I guess that's what it seems like. You know, sometimes, and, and I, you know, I'm not making fun of anyone. I know that there are mechanisms, and I, you know, I used to be unconscious myself in the past. And the more unconscious we are, the more hurtful things are, you know, because then we're, we don't even really know what hurts. If something hurts, if we don't know what it is, then we become cranky. So if we become aware of about what hurts us what you know i can t i can speculate pretty pretty closely i think what hurt her she's a christian and she took offense to my original post on facebook so or she's a muslim so I was talking against religion. I was questioning the religious behavior and the, and the religious intellectual dishonesty. So, and then instead of t talking to me straightforward, she had to do this hip shooting. And it came across so awkward and so weird because it had actually nothing to really to do was what I was saying, taking things totally out of context and then became apparent it was not some kind of misunderstanding which I first thought it was. She 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 was trying to play with me. Play with <laughs> Didn't work, sorry, you know. But that's what the ego does. The ego gets real pissed. And then because the ego doesn't want to come across as angry then the ego invents a way to get even. So it will figure out some way. So that's how tricky the ego is. That's how inventive the ego is. And it's such a waste of time. Waste of time and energy to be writing something that's intellectually dishonest, that doesn't lead the conversation forward, that doesn't, it's not a conversation. A conversation is if we talk with each other 
straightforward, without nonsense, without bullshit, without hate, without some idiotic emotions involved. Also, without 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 too much uh, of the sexual organs involved, and uh, and most of all, without the ego in, involved. Then we can we can actually come to some common ground. And we can say, ah, okay, this is where you misunderstood me. This is where you lost me, or this is where I lost you. And maybe we can find back together, and we can clear these things up, you know, what, where, where did it go, get sour or something, you know, so, and if people could admit that, where it went sour, then we could really make progress in the world, my goodness, but if someone had the courage to say, or someone, it even starts with introspection, you know, these people aren't even on, they're not even there where they would even recognize for themselves that they got triggered. So some people aren't even aware of that. So how can they even introspect themselves? But can you imagine if we started to do this? If we all started to do this, started to introspect and see, ah, oh, I got triggered. Okay, this is already a humongous step in the right direction. I got triggered. Now, how do I deal with this now? Do I lash out? Do I bother someone and take up their time with some bullshit comments? Or some retaliative stuff? Or do I, am I willing to be intellectually honest and say to myself, I got triggered. It hurt. <laughs> it hurt. Yeah, it did. Okay, so then then we're going to move forward. Then, then we would be really making progress. Because then the person wouldn't have to be doing side shooting and letting it out on an innocent person. Then, then they can say, ah, okay, I got triggered with this. Yeah. Or they can say, you know, I really don't agree with you with your standpoint. I don't agree with you. You know, she could tell me that I don't agree with you, or she could tell tell me, look, she could say, I'm a Christian. What you wrote there is wrong. It hurt me. That would be a whole lot more honest, you know. But no, she, she can't be honest. She can't even be honest to herself and. See, this is just representative of most humans. That's what's happening all over the place, everywhere. That's why people are so mean to each other. If we could introspect, there wouldn't be any need to be mean to anyone. Anymore. But if I can introspect and say to myself, yes, I'm jealous of that person, or yes, I, am, I was hurt, yes, they hurt my feelings, I can be honest with myself on this. It's very straightforward, but people don't want to admit to it. Because of the ego. The ego, the ego that says, I never gonna let the inner child ever get hurt again. But we're getting hurt all the time. That's a fact. Okay. So the best way to de deal with it is first of all to admit it to ourselves. I got hurt. Now how, now how do I deal with it now? How do I proceed from there? Then I'm already on the next level. If I can say, I got hurt. I wish people would do it. That's a tricky thing. Because the ego creates a fog in our brains. And the corporations, they got your ego by the balls. They use your ego for their, for their advance, uh, financial advances. So that's the thing. That's why I'm saying, free, free yourself from ego, dissolve the ego, and 
the consumers can take charge again. You know, we don't have to be unempowered anymore. We don't have to blame everything on the Rothschilds if you do that. Oh, that'd be so much better, wouldn't it? <laughs> My goodness. Always remember to breathe, very important. I have to tell myself this all the time, all the time, breathe. I had some trouble sleeping, of course, since I found out what happened to Barbara. I had some trouble sleeping, I'd maybe doze off and then I would wake up again and, and, and stare the, the truth right in the face right in the face and, and I'm not running away from it I'm not gonna run away from it I'm not gonna drink alcohol or or eat myself into into a brain fog or something I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna do that anymore I stopped eating sugar and chocolate whole food vegan that is the only way to do it when you do this you lose weight very gradually which is the healthy route this is the healthy way to do it to lose weight very gradually over a course of two or three years most people don't want to wait that, that long but you know I thought about this earlier but they waited for 40 years to get humongously fat. So now they should have the patience to just change the entire lifestyle to healthy so that the body can slowly heal itself, you know. Losing weight as a form of healing, you know, healing journey. Natural, naturally. That's losing weight naturally. Balancing out I, I don't even call it losing weight so much as balancing the body, balancing itself. Gaining muscles naturally again, losing the mid fat area, the, the spare tire. You know. So that's what the body does naturally. Totally detoxing itself with clays that I have, have this color here, like this gray. That is the color of sodium bentonite clay, by the way. This here, this is the average sodium bentonite color. But this here is not sodium bentonite. There may be some in it, but but this is this is the color of sodium bentonite clay. This is totally the color of it. Oh no! Shit! I'm <laughs> so no! Oh, no! I created a mess. Oh no! I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's the, that is so ridiculous. Why did I do this? Why did I do this? Oh man, I turned it too far. Now I have to use that paint that is here on the rug. Luckily, I have an old rug here to catch these kind of things from from getting to the main wall. So, oh my goodness, ridiculous. Why did I need to do this? I'm not paying attention. I guess because I didn't get enough sleep. I wasn't being mindful. That's really what it is. You know, I can blame it on the sleep, but on the lack of sleep. But whether it's lack of sleep or not, I wasn't being mindful. We can have lack of sleep and still be mindful. You know? So that's another thing that the ego is quick to do. It's like, oh, I didn't get enough sleep. You know? So my husband and I, we both do this quickly. And we're very quick to blame the other person also. So no, we need to always take full responsibility for what we're doing. I wasn't mindful, so that's why I spilled this. Yeah. 
so I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna use the puddle that's on the rug. <laughs> yeah. That is ridiculous. I am more than ever now convinced because of all the things that I have seen with the medical industry, all the lies they put out, the slander against healthy modalities. I mean, they really get creative on this uh, in a bad way on, on how to slander the healthy modalities. And they use people's ignorance for that they they are they're predators on people's ignorance and and they are predators on people's eagerness to come to very quick conclusions on the causality of things so that's why it is so vital to make videos and clear this these misunderstandings up in regards to the the propaganda for the pharmaceutical drugs and the slander against the healthy natural earth presence that we got like clays and and plants so when when a natural substance like e they even went so far to tell people not to use calcium carbonate, which is chalk. We went so far to tell people not to use chalk anymore. That's how far this goes. And chalk is a completely harmless substance. completely harmless you can even breathe it it doesn't hurt you and and i wouldn't of course i would never breathe would never recommend to breathe any kind of dust in for a prolonged time people who get live in deserts and and they have they have hurricanes there and they have high winds and the wind blows the desert ground you know the the very dry dust up that's that contains many natural substances and silica and stuff like this and you don't want to breathe dust in all the time naturally that's going to be hard on the lungs for any animal but it's not because it as they are trying to manipulate the public it is not what they're the way they are portraying it. they're portraying it as if certain substances and clays and chalk they're telling people that uh, that it, it causes the C word that it in itself is something to avoid and that is just simply a lie they make they make these things up because these people are turning, many people, more and more people are turning now to natural holistic solutions. You know, chalk is, is calcium carbonate that is in supplements, that is in, in calcium supplements. And then, and, and yet they, they put propaganda out there saying that calcium supplement is doing this and this and this and it is in Johnson and Johnson baby powder and now people jump on that bandwagon and sue Johnson and Johnson. I mean, I'm not a super fan of Johnson and Johnson, 
I am very critical of of these this company and of these of their lawyers and so on that that work for them 24 hours a day but I like Jamie Johnson he made he's he's a very amazing soul you know he's trying to make the best out of it he's he is standing up for justice and he's standing up for in for for wealth distri distribution he he's not very informed about the medical industry though and i can see why because he is systematically systematically manipulated from the medical industry because he live, lives in that very family so naturally he will he will not look further into into that scam that i am talking about so but you know but but johnson and johnson has fallen fallen complete victim to the to the instance that sits above them in corporate leverage which is monsanto so monsanto has risen in corporate leverage to such a degree to such an enormous degree that it that it becomes frightening actually frightening monsanto creates pesticides yeah they have pushed their way into the department of agriculture barack obama you know has has been has been manipulated and has been seduced by monsanto i can't say it any other way sorry but this is this is what happened okay it's a fact and it probably doesn't sit so well for a lot of people because they want to think barack obama is a saint or something you know, you know just because he belongs to their group or they belong to his particular group doesn't mean he is a saint <laughs> there's a there is a, there is, there are corrupt people everywhere in every sort of group no? in every ethnicity there are corrupt people this is a fact okay let's look at it let's let's acknowledge that fact That doesn't mean we have to go against any certain ethnicity. Let's just acknowledge there are corrupt people in every ethnicity there is, and in every sort of group there is. There's a lot of infiltrators, also in PETA even, you know, that's why. It, but that's another story, I'm not going to get into this now. That's a huge thing by itself, by the way. So I mentioned this before in some videos, but the leverage that Monsanto has is is epic proportions. Farmers in India are committing suicide because of Monsanto driving them out of business, ruining their livelihoods that they have depended on in the past. Monsanto coming in there with unbe unbearable corruption. So creating problems, environmental destructive problems, creating those for, from scratch, designed problems so that they can sell us their patented plants, pa plant DNA patenting, which has done enormous amount of of horror i think they they but just in the nick of time some environmental defense lawyers were able to undo this here in the united states with the dna patenting but it's happening in india and with that they are ruining 
the regular farmers' lives. They're ruining the farmers. They're shutting them down. They put them into poverty, where they they just they can't handle it. They they shoot themselves. They can't handle it. It's too much. This is unbelievable tyranny that's happening. It's ecological tyranny that's happening. That's conducted by Monsanto, but most people don't know about it. They instead they believe the lies from Monsanto. They believe the corporate lies that are put out into the world through talk talk radio, people like Rush Limbaugh and stuff like this, who are completely unscrupulous with this. They just whatever whoever pays, they will propagate their message. Richard Berman, you know market psychologist because whoever pays the most he's propagating their message and he's going to manipulate the people in the favor of the the company that pays him so that's how it's how it works When I was studying psychology, I asked some people you know, what what their goal is after they studied, after they get their diploma. One guy said, I want to go into marketing, into market psychology. And as soon as he said that, I, it just, I, it just was, I just felt this extreme disappointment inside of me. Like, oh my gosh, is that cold? I thought. And I think I said something too in that manner. And he just shrugged his shoulders and walked away. I said to him, I want to help the world. I want to help, um, help make the world a better place. That's what I want to do with my knowledge in psychology. But some people are very tuned out, very tuned out of that. Some people see everything through the lens of profit maximization and they don't see anything else. And out of this comes unbelievably catastrophic things and events, including the war in the Middle East. It comes from, from greed from people here in the United States. That's how this started. Okay, there are some incredibly ruthless people in the weapon manufacturing corporations. This is a fact. I'm not, I'm not pulling this out of the air. This is a fact. And those are the ones who come up with the Christian conspiracy theories to distract the public from what's really happening, you know, from the conspiracy that's really happening. And that's that conspiracy that's really happening, that's based on greed and nothing else. There's nothing else than greed, greed, greed for money and power. That's all that. That's all there is, and that's ego driven. Ego, self images, self image of, you know, I'm gonna protect the inner child from never being hurt again. I'm gonna become this or this. I'm gonna become rich. I'm gonna, you know have more than I ever need, but I'm taking care of the inner trial. This is all, it's a misconception by the ego. 
And that's why the ego needs to be dissolved. And what Friedrich Nietzsche wanted is he wanted the Übermensch, the superhuman. And the superhuman is not someone who is tyrannical. The superhuman is not a not a, a monarch, not a dictator. Superhuman is not someone who oppresses others. The superhuman, what he means by this, by superhuman is, and what he means by the will to power, is the superhuman goes straight forward. Straight forward. That's why Yunatan Misa always has this hand movement, straight forward. St goes straight forward, and he goes all the way with it. Mm -hmm. Not in a, in, a, in a way to suppress others, not in a way to tyrannize the world, not in a way to hawk wealth and possessions and land, but in a way, and that's what most people don't seem to really quite understand. What he means by this is the, the will to power in a way that that I know what I want, you know, I know where I'm going, I'm going forward, and nothing can stop me, no, no one can stop me, no, no other person who pushes himself in the way, no other institution who tyrannizes me can stop me. I'm walking my way straight forward, regardless, that's, that's the world to power. So that's empowerment. When you know what you want and you're going forward without hurting another living being in the process. Very important to add that. Very important. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They think, oh, the world of power, right on, useless, what, what, whatever. You know, they've completely bypassed the message. The will to power, to be empowered. That means I am no longer pointing the finger at someone else when things go wrong. That's empowerment. Never point the finger, not even once. Anymore. I've done it myself. I've, I've lived most of my life in unempowerment. Trust me on that. My entire life. Until, until I become more and more aware. I started reading Nietzsche in 2003. Then I started, first I started with a novel. My mother gave me this novel. I heard of Nietzsche before and Zarathustra, but I didn't know what it was about. And so my mother gave me this novel, which was an, a, a brilliant move of her. <laughs> I don't know how aware she was or how brilliant that move was. But after reading that novel, I was hooked on Nietzsche. I was like, okay, now I'm going to read the actual Nietzsche books. Now I need to know who that person is. That person is eerily familiar to me, energetically. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, I know how that feels. You know, and yeah, and I read the Zarathustra, which saved my life because I was in unbearable grief over a great Dane. The book was speaking out of my in deep, deepest inner depth. Was that you know this going into the valley? You have to go into the valley. You have no other choice. And it's very strange that a teacher in Waldorf school has written a poem for me. He, you know, the Waldorf school teachers, I thought that that is very amazing that Rudolf Steiner developed this idea that this concept that a Waldorf school teacher, you know, was 40 kids, 40 kids, 40 students. 
at the end of the year creates a poem for every single individual child and making it himself I, I i don't know if it's always his own creation or whether he was also i think he, he was also allowed to use someone else's poem but this teacher created a poem on his own for me that was quite amazing i didn't understand how amazing it was when i was a child i reflect on that later on And that's very touching that he wrote me this poem that so much resembles the Zarathustra having to go down into the valley, having to come down from the ivory tower and descend down into the valley and drink with the populace body, drink and eat with the populace body in order to understand them. How can he understand them if he does not come down into that valley? But that valley is also interpreted as the valley of the mind, the psyche. As Eckhart told us that we, we have to, in order to grow, we have to make our experiences, and they're not always pleasant. And I have gone into the valley. I can say this without any pretense. I have gone into the valley several times. I've been to hell and back. 